Last time we learned about the ephod, and in this video we'll continue the last two components to the garments of the high priest. A link to that video, if you haven't seen it, will be in the video description or somewhere on screen. I don't want to waste a lot of time on the intro for this one, so let's jump right in. The first garment that we're going to discuss is the skillfully woven band of the ephod. The band of the ephod was wound around the waist and tied in front. Besides the band of the ephod, there was also the sash that tied the tunic. Leviticus 8.7 states, He put the tunic on him and girded him with the sash, and clothed him with the robe, and put the ephod on him, and he girded him with the artistic band of the ephod, with which he tied it to him. The sash and the band of the ephod were the work of an embroiderer. This is why the band of the ephod was also described as a skillfully woven waistband. The band of the ephod was made in the same pattern as the ephod using fine linen, gold, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn. The sash for the tunic was like the band of the ephod except was missing the gold yarn. The next garment the high priest would put on would be the breastpiece of judgment. It was a square cloth that spanned about 9 inches. It was double folded and attached to the ephod. Its square shape depicted that the intercessory work of the priest was without partiality. As we also discussed with the bronze altar, a square shape in the Bible symbolizes equality, the same on all sides. It was made of the same material as the ephod, gold, blue, purple, scarlet yarn, and finely twisted linen. Its majesty and beauty caught one's eye. Attached to the outer face of the breastpiece, there were precious stones depicting the twelve tribes of Israel. Let's read Exodus 28, 29 through 30. Aaron shall carry the names of the sons of Israel in the breastpiece of judgment over his heart when he enters the holy place for a memorial before the Lord continually. In the pocket that was created by the fold in the cloth, remember it was double folded, the Urim and the Thummim were placed. The Urim and the Thummim were a means of receiving divine revelation from God. Exodus 28, 30 states, You shall put in the breastpiece of judgment the Urim and the Thummim and they shall be over Aaron's heart when he goes before the Lord. And Aaron shall carry the judgment of the sons of Israel over his heart before the Lord continually. When Joshua was succeeding Moses, God commanded them to take Joshua before Eleazar the priest, who would inquire of God using the Urim and the Thummim. Let's read Numbers 27, 18-20. So the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay your hand on him, and have him stand before Eleazar the priest, and before all the congregation, and commission him in their sight. You shall put some of your authority on him, in order that all the congregation of the sons of Israel may obey him. Moreover, he shall stand before Eleazar the priest, who shall inquire for him by the judgment of the Urim before the Lord. At his command they shall go out, and at his command they shall come in, both he and the sons of Israel with him, even all the congregation. The breastpiece was used to discern God's will regarding important national matters. In 1 Samuel chapter 23, we read, Now David knew that Saul was plotting evil against him, so he said to Abiathar, the priest, Bring the ephod here. Then David said, O God of Israel, your servant has heard for certain that Saul is seeking to come to Keilah to destroy the city on my account. Will the men of Keilah surrender me into his hand? Will Saul come down just as your servant has heard? O Lord God of Israel, I pray, tell your servant. And the Lord said he will come down. Then David said, Will the men of Keilah surrender me into his hand, and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, They will surrender you. The breastpiece on the ephod committed all the judgment of God. The breastpiece was also referred to as the breastpiece of judgment. There were two rings on the top of the breastpiece that were connected to two settings on the ephod shoulder pieces by gold chains. Exodus 28, 22-25 you shall make on the breastpiece chains of twisted cordage, work in pure gold. You shall make on the breastpiece two rings of gold, and shall put the two rings of the two ends of the breastpiece. You shall put the two cords of gold on the two rings at the ends of the breastpiece. You shall put the other two ends of the two cords on the two filigree settings, and put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod at the front of it. Also, there were two rings at the bottom of the breastpiece that were fastened to the two rings on the band of the ephod by blue cords. You can read on in Exodus chapter 28 for that. Attached on the outer surface of the breastpiece, there were four rows of three precious stones. The name of one of the tribes of Israel was inscribed on each stone. It's likely that the names were inscribed in order of their camp assignments in the wilderness. 
by wearing the breastpiece over his heart and entering the holy place, the high priest was to bear the sins of Israel and intercede on their behalf before God. Because of our sins, we cannot go before God without an intercession of Jesus Christ. Yet we had that intercession in him. Just as the names of the tribes are inscribed on the twelve stones, God's chosen people will be regarded in the book of life. We will be remembered, protected, and will dwell in God's love because Jesus, our high priest, covers us and protects us in his bosom. Jesus Christ has inscribed us in his heart and on his palm. Just as the precious stones shine in their brilliant colors in the bosom of the high priest, we have to dedicate ourselves using our God-given talents to glorify Him. God desires to receive glory through His children. Because the breastpiece was especially treasured and beautiful, the high priest would look at it often. In the same way, God treasures His people so that we are enabled to stand before Jesus our high priest and live as a part of the body of Christ. Those who rely on Him certainly receive help. The ephod, the breastpiece, and the shoulder pieces of the ephod were fastened either by gold chains or blue cords. It was all tied together to make one. The high priest who served as the mediator between God and Israel in this first covenant foreshadows Jesus Christ, who has come as the mediator of the new covenant. Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, who was in the bosom of the Father, he bore our sins and weaknesses on his shoulders. He's the gold chain of God's love that cannot be cut or changed. He's the blue yarn, which does not know death. It depicts the color of life. Concerning the garments of the high priest, God gave very specific directions as to the rings, as to the design, the length of the robe, and the colors. Every detail had significance. In the same way, God, who understands and protects his people, will guide us in every detail so that those who rest in Jesus' bosom will be eternally safe and at peace. Just as a precious stone retains its color in God's bosom, you and I will be able to live eternally as a brilliant memorial stone. May we become the people who rest in the bosom of our High Priest, Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching, everyone. Don't miss the next video when we wrap up the studies of the tabernacle and the priests. I'll see you all then. God bless. Thank you.